Greetings, comrades, from the Rosiska Tome Korporatsa. Translation and voiceover by BMI Russia. Welcome to the Russian Nuclear Corporation project. This is a set of circuit boards. I'll zoom down so you can get a closer look at them. That I bought, well, I designed it. I submitted it to GLCPCB, not a sponsor. I submitted it as two separate circuit boards uh, covered by one shipment. Interesting, the first one cost two pounds. The second one, they must be partly funded with the shipping cost. It was £4, so you can't just keep adding £2 orders on. And the idea of this is, it's going to be an ionic emitter that connects to high voltage supply, but the difference is that I, I'm going to have needles in it, but I'm going to have little sockets and needles. It's going to be completely serviceable. And this will allow you to convert standard, cheap, high voltage eBay ionizer modules, like, say, for instance, this one. Uh, into controllable ozone generators of your choice. Let's begin the project. So to allow the connectors to go in, I've got three needles here. I've got three pads with quite big holes and a connection pad for the high voltage. I've got the side pads with an isolation slot in the circuit board. And uh, this is then going to be stood off in front of it. And it's got the uh, Antennas, a grounded antenna, so to speak, with uh, electrical connection option, but also a connection via the pillars that will keep this together. It's just experimental. This is a prototype, just as well, really, since I spelt it wrong. Uh, this was supposed to say atmospheric invigorator. I did a complete Sean Connery Ru from Russia with love. I said atmospheric invigorator, mish money penny. Let's start building it. So the needles are going to go into little sockets. The little sockets are from turned pin sockets like these. You can buy sets of these on eBay. You can get big strips of it. Not the sort of leaf spring contact, but the actual turned pin. It's actually a round uh, pin designed to take, well, round receptacle designed to take round pins. You can press them out if you get a pair of side cutters and you grip the pin at the back. We're going to be cutting the pin off anyway. But we grip the pin and press it down and say something like across a hole like this. There's going to be a bump out the speaker. Press it down and it pops out uh, and that's you've got your little socket. As I say, the pins in the back, it doesn't matter if they get bent. I'm going to be cutting them off anyway. And this should be sized to fit in here. It's a friction fit. Ooh, right, I'm going to press it in with the Kinepex. It's in. A very close friction fit. That is because I used the uh, calipers to check the size. And now I'm going to solder them in. And then I'll show you how I intend to put the needles into them. So I'm going to make sure these are pressed down firmly. So they're all at the same height. And then I'm going to solder them on the back. Bring in the soldering iron. So there's Pin holder one, pin holder two, and pin holder three. And the pins are going to be using these are going to be standard sewing type pins just because they're convenient. I think they're stainless steel or at least steel anyway. They, they stuck to a magnet. They're probably more steel than stainless steel. I'm going to flow some solder onto these, just the rectangular pads both of them just for options, but I want to keep the main round pads in this clear. Now, I'm going to crop the actual, the original pins off the back of these because they're not needed. Okie dokie. Now this, the needles are going to be connected to negative high voltage. This is going to be connected to the high voltage ground effect. They're positive. And that means the Ions are going to be attracted towards this. There's going to be a lot of ozone activity in the mid th this area, and I expect to corrode. So to actually sort of mitigate that to a degree, I'm going to flow some solder onto these. So uh, the way I prefer to do that, to beef these pads up, yes, this means it's going to be atomizing lead everywhere. Probably it's not really. But goodness knows what's going to happen. This thing literally, this device literally, disassembles air molecules, gas molecules in the air, and then reforms them. It's quite, it sounds very sophisticated. It sounds very Russian nuclear corporation-ish. Incidentally, 
Rosiska Atomic Corporatsa is indeed Russian Nuclear Corporation, but uh, there's no organisation actually called that. Not that I know of. I didn't find it. I searched on the internet. I did not find uh, Russian Nuclear Corporation. Now I've uh, put those little dots of soda around that. I'm just going to swipe the soda around. I'm going to follow it round in a circle a couple of times, and it will even the soda out, and it will basically coat those pads. It may require a bit of experimentation. Don't linger too long. You may pop the tracks off the circuit board material, but having said that, these are pretty good quality. Uh, GLC are not a sponsor, GLC PCB. They did very generously in the huge box send me a jigsaw puzzle, which I think is their factory. I don't really expect to be building that anytime soon, but not to worry. Now the needles. These are standard steel needles, pins. And I've marked them at roughly about eight millimeters, just over a quarter of an inch in the end. And I'm going to cut them now with uh, my Knipex. This is probably Knipex abuse. It is Knipex abuse. It's going to be quite tough on the blades because it's quite hard steel. It's probably not something I should be doing with my Knipex. But I am, and it's also going to be creating a loud speaker pop probably, as happens with uh, when you make loud clicking noises in front of a microphone. Oh well. Let me just grab this last one. Oh, it is sticking magnetically to it. That might not be the purest stainless steel. I'm not sure these are. All I've got is, I don't even have the lid for the container, so I'm not really sure what they are. I could tell the diameter. That'd be useful. The, the blades are surviving. Right, tell you what, I'm just going to grab my good uh, digital calipers. And I'm going to measure this on zero. Uh, 0.65 millimeters, say. Yeah, that's about right. So you want roughly 0.6-ish type. Uh, make sure I turn that off. Pins. They're very cheap. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pair of long nose pliers. That is not a pair of long nose pliers. Where are my long nose pliers? There they are. Oh, there's that. Another circuit design. That comes later on. That was for measurements. Uh, and I'm going to take these pins that I've just cut. And this is the joy of this unit versus other units that you can buy. This one you can actually change your needles in just by pressing them into these sockets. The reason that I've got that needle there with a bit of blue ink in it is because I've noticed with some of them you have to, I don't know if I was big, what I was cutting them with before, but I found that it was quite helpful at times. I'm trying to pick that pin up. My fingers are too big, big bare hands. Oh, even my snips, I'll just pick up magnetically. That'll do. I found it was quite useful in some instances to take a standard needle. I marked it so I didn't use it because this could potentially blunt it and just push it pointy end in and that kind of settles the little contact springs. As it is, it doesn't seem to be much of an issue with these. They seem to be going in quite well. So you're going to grip them in the long nose plier and stuff them into those little sockets. Some commercial ionizers do you let you change needles like this. The posh ones, the good ones. Some of them sell you designer needles that are special because they emit ingestible ions. There's no such thing. It's just ions, it's charged air molecules. Suppose really you could ingest them if you wanted. I'm not sure if that'd be good or bad. Now, let me think, let me think, how am I going to do this? I think I shall put screw through here. Spring washers would be quite useful for this, little serrated washers, but this is a prototype. So I'm going to screw a little brass spacer on. You could just use uh, screws with nuts. It's sized for M3, this one. If there's any interest, I'll put the files for these up, the Gerber files. I'll have to correct the spelling mistake, though. I'd feel a bit odd about that. So now I'm putting that on like that. And this is where it's going to make connection with the pads at the back. By going through like this, notice how the rings are now effectively in front of the needles. And I'm going to put a nut in the back. And then 
I'm going to grab a high voltage supply, probably a low voltage one. I do currently have a favourite, it was featured in a recent video. So I shall spin that one, I'll give it a wee nip up to make sure it's tight. And this is our rather sophisticated Russian Nuclear Corporation. Uh, atmospheric Invigorator. Right. It's quite a smart little module. It's got these holes here. It's designed to mount onto a case. I think if I was mounting onto a case to avoid uh, violating the sort of insulation, the separation of these slots, I'd probably jack it up a bit. But another, this is another good thing. Because we're making these ourselves, we don't have to follow electrical safety regulations designed for normal people. We can uh, make it safe with current limiting, but the whole lot can be exposed so like babies can put their fingers in things like that. Because if the babies get a shock, it serves them right. Right, tell you what, let's grab a high voltage module. I'm going to grab one of my favourites right now. My favourite because it's got two connections. Well, it's got the four connections, effectively. It's got positive and negative 12 volts. Make sure it is a 12 volt one. And then it's got a white wire and a green wire, and they're both currently coming out to carbon brush uh, emitters. The white one is a high negative voltage. The green one is effectively the ground of the circuitry, the high voltage circuitry inside. If you get an ionizer like this one, which just has the single output, and I'd recommend getting a beefier module for this. The, more, the higher it is, the bigger it is, the more ozone it will produce. But uh, that's something you can actually use, scale it by adjusting it to whatever you want. If you use something like this, this one is a... Uh, oh, this is 110 to 220 volt, this module. Uh, you're going to have to use the... If it's only got a single output, this will be the high negative voltage that goes to the needles. But you're going to have to then provide a connection to the neutral. And uh, I'd recommend doing that via... Well, I'd recommend doing, if you're going to use the mains voltage modules, I'd recommend putting at least a, one or two one meg ohm resistors in series of these wires inside the case just to actually limit the current case. Someone touches the needles or case it just makes the whole lot live. Right, tell you what, I'm going to cut this set of emitters off and then I'm going to attach the wires onto my Russian nuclear atmospheric invigorator. So I'm going to strip these soft silicon wires here. And the green one is the effectively electronic ground. Where is the solder? I have misplaced the solder. I have more solder. That's okay. I shall tin these connections. Afterwards, I'm going to test this. I'm going to see, is it producing a decent amount of ozone? So I've just tinned those connections. The white one is going on to the central needle connection here. And the green one, the ground effectively, the electronics are ground, I'm going to put onto this connection here. And now, if I power this module up, this is a 12 volt module. 12 volts a good idea because uh, in this instance, unlike an ionizer that can create high voltage to ground and damage power supplies, this one should effectively be an ionic short circuit between the uh, the needles and the uh, rings here. So the power supply is on. Let's see what happens. Is it going to work? Uh, let me just check what volt this is at first. It's 12 volts. Oh, it's working. So when I hold this up gingerly, because it is high voltage and could give me a little zing, if I hold it up to the microphone, you should hear the air flowing from it and maybe a slight hum as well. Can you hear anything? Oh, and I can smell the ozone. This is very interesting. Oh, I'm going to get zapped off this. It's spicy voltages. Right, tell you what, I'm going to set up a little test now and uh, I'll be back in a moment and we'll see how quickly this produces ozone. I think we're ready to begin the experiment. So the thing we're looking at, I'm just going to turn the power on. The unit is now producing ozone. This unit in here, the value marked O3 
is the one we're looking for and we're looking to time that for how long it's going to actually take before it starts showing a little hint of ozone. Generally speaking, I would expect it to appear with an average ozone generator within about a minute, but uh, it just depends how high an output this unit's producing. Incidentally, this module is uh, using 12 volts DC at just 17 milliamps. It's very, very little. So it builds up, it's triggered, it's starting to read it now. Three parts per million, four parts per million, five. And it will continue to climb. So that is, actually, that was quite quick that it started producing the ozone. So let's see how far it goes. Let's see what it goes up to within a reasonable time. Actually, it's claiming a fairly high lick. That is quite an output from that little unit. It's not bad at all. Right, tell you what, I'm going to pause. And actually, am I going to pause? Actually, I'm not going to pause. I'm just going to keep talking because uh, it's claiming at a fair rate. This particular ozone detector is just, it likes to try zeroing itself out. It, it, it's okay for doing tests like this, but it's not what I'd call a perfect ambient ozone detector. Uh, so it goes up in a number of steps and then it will just nudge back. Oh, that is claiming super fast. That is actually, it's about to go into alarm mode. That was fast. Uh, at 0.1 parts per million, it will start beeping. It's beeping. So uh, that is working. Let's uh, open this up and sniff the ozone. Oh, it stinks, yeah. That is producing a fairly decent amount for such a low power consumption. That is very impressive. Very good. You saw that tail off because as soon as it opened that, it just let it clear out. Uh, but this is uh, this is working a treat. Oh yeah, it's, it does create quite a strong draft. I'll let you hear the draft before. I'll hold it up to the microphone again. You can hear that draft blowing at the needles. Um, I don't think you'll see it if I turn the light off. It'll just go pitch black probably. Even if I do this, are you going to see the glow in the needles? Even I can't see glow in needles because my eyes are adjusted to that light. Or oh, I can just barely see the glow in needles. You're not going to catch it. This camera is not sensitive enough. But what I'm seeing here is that each needle has a little tiny purple point on the tip of it. But, but that's a good result. Uh, watch your eyes. The light is coming back. So yes, that is a good result. This thing is doing exactly what I wanted it to do. And I like the fact that if you use one of these, you can actually change these needles. You can adjust the distance between the rings and needles according to the voltage of what gives the best results. There's a quite a decent flow of, of air out of that. And uh, I made three different uh, hole sizes. Uh, so I've got the option of just one big hole in the middle or the two smaller ones or the three. But I did notice that uh, the purple glow because of the uh, space effect, because this larger diameter hole, although the needles were all the same distance away from it, uh, it is a bit dimmer, that one, because the voltage, the ionization is happening preferentially to the smaller holes just because they're much closer to the uh, to the needles. But that is a very good result. A very good result indeed. So that is the Russian Nuclear Corporation Atmospheric Invigorator with Ion Thruster Technology.